finished collaboration, we're going to move on to the backstory phase. Um, and this phase has two parts. Um, in the first part, um, we're going to be creating our major characters. So in Good Society, each player takes on the role of the major characters who are like the uh, form the central focus of gameplay. Um, and each major character, as I sort of alluded to before, is made up of four components. Uh, so the first one um, is their desire, which is a burning hope or passion that they wish to accomplish during the game. The second one is a relationship, which is a connection they form with another character, such as um, we've got object of affection, rival, and former friend. Mm -hmm. uh, the third one is their character role, so um, the archetype that they play in Austin's world, such as the socialite, the meddler, or the hedonist. <laughs> and the last one is their family background, uh, so the military period and new money in this case. The first step in the backstory is to set up your playset. Now, I've already done this, and as I mentioned before, um, we're playing with the playsets in full, which means that I've got the desire, the relationship, the character role, and the family background already sorted into sets. Uh, if we were playing with it in part, I would have just the desires and the relationships, and I'd have all of the family backgrounds and all of the character roles on the side for us to choose from later in the process. Um, but in this case, what you see is what you get. Cool. And of course, as we're playing with no hidden information, um, the desire cards are all face up. If we're playing with some hidden information, those would still be face down. Now we move on to step two, which is to select a desire um, and then take the corresponding set. So if you want to go ahead now and read these desire cards, mm. if in the case there was hidden information and you picked up your desire and you didn't <laughs> like it, you would have the opportunity to swap that for a spare from the playset as like well. This yeah, this the bol you bolster your love interest reputation, and then you can marry them. You're like, hey, look at this respectable person. I want to marry. Look how respectable they are. <laughs> right. Slide. I'm gonna slide these. Things. All right, look. I'll just take this one. That sounds pretty great. So my desire is restore your reputation, be forgiven by a former friend. Uh, once you enjoy the pleasures of friendly company and good opinion until in a single instant your mad passions led you to throw it all away. In one rash act you wronged another deeply and plunged yourself into interminable disrepute. <laughs> now all you seek is to bury your past, regain your good name and find forgiveness. I have desire number five. Come into substantial wealth while ensuring your reputation stays absolutely impeccable. Mm. I've always had a taste for luxury, be it grand balls, expensive clothing or the racetrack. But now my debts are severe and uh, the time to pay is fast approaching. I need money fast. You can't let anyone know your true situation. However, as your good opinion and the help you receive from others would both be worse. Uh, I have desire number nine. This is a pretty spicy one. Uh, I get to bolster my love interest reputation and then win my parents' permission to marry them. In an ideal world, one is not dependent on the permission of one's parents to pursue their deepest and most ardent affections. And while this is a, only a little historical world, um, that says sadly is not an ideal world. And if I want to wait without losing that sweet inheritance, which I need to pursue my head in this ways, mm -hmm. um, I'll need permission from mummy and daddy. And of course, pleasing them means choosing a spouse with a completely impeccable reputation, mm -hmm. uh, which apparently I have to build for them because I'm assuming that they're a little bit tarnished at the moment. Yeah. My parents would never approve of me marrying them and I have to work on this. So I have to create a parent as a mandatory connection. We've read our desires out loud because we're not playing with any secret information. However, if you are playing with secret information, there are still some things that you will need to reveal during this step. Um, if any of the cards had public knowledge on them, which none of these ones do, that's something that you have to share whether your desire is secret or not. So they will specify that on the card? Yeah, okay. yes. So the next thing we're going to do is form relationships between our characters. We all have a relationship card. Yep. So what we're going to do is take these relationship cards um, and turn them private side up so that we can see the juicier side of the card. So my relationship card is former friend. The giver of this card wronged the taker painfully and completely. I've got a rival. The giver and taker of this card are rivals. For the taker, this may be a trivial rivalry. For the giver, it is certainly a bitter one. And I have, of course, my object of affection whose reputation I must bolster. I know. I'm clearly in love with them, whether they choose to reciprocate this affection is entirely up to them, which raises the possibility I'm going to build the reputation <laughs> of, of someone, someone who doesn't even love me <laughs> and then true. seek permission to marry them and be probably brutally rejected. And that is <laughs> classic Austin. <laughs> yes. <laughs> 
<laughs> that is how you know you're playing the right game. So you notice that in each of these cards it uses the terminology giver and taker. Mm -hmm. So the giver is us, the person who originally had the card. Mm -hmm. The taker is the person who will take their relationship card during this process that we're about to do to show that um, a relationship has been formed between your characters. Mm -hmm. yeah. So we've got our cards private side up. We've placed them in front of us. Um, and then now, when one of us believes that a relationship would be perfect for our desire, we can go ahead and grab that to form that connection. Um, this should be a very open process. Yeah, so we, we, we need a weekly to make this work and we might not get it completely right on the first try, so it's okay if we swap around. Mm -hmm. um, but it's best so we can, to... We kind of say, can I claim that yes. I'm your former friend? Yes. Well, I'm really interested in, like, because this is going to be, like, the main... Thing, because I think either of us could take that at the moment. Well, what cards we want to stay. avoid is a situation where two people swap cards. That's yeah. the most important. Yes, thing. of course. I mean, in a three-player game, it's very difficult because the last person. Former friend and rival. Ball. It's like, well, yeah, okay. Yeah. Say you have four Actually, players playing. You don't want a situation where two people swap cards uh -huh. and the other two people swap cards. Because it doesn't cards. encourage play between. There's the other not really people. any connection between those people. Mm -hmm. It's like go tell your own novel. We'll tell our own novel over here. Mm -hmm. I think it probably makes a lot of sense for me to be your object of affection because. Yeah, my reputation really is reputation. really bad, so it just makes everything so hard for your character. What happened to your reputation great. again? It just it fell. It, it fell. It, it just we fell. We don't know. We'll find what out. happened yeah. was I did something really awful mm -hmm. that we don't yet know what it was, and it resultantly, was awful. it was a talk of the town. Was Everyone was scandalized. Yeah. Yes. Yeah, I, it, I could be your former friend, and we can work out why the reputation. Right. Maybe, so if I take knows. this, the giver of this card is you. Wronged me would be the taker. Yes. Awesome. Wronged you. All right. I can be wronged. I'm, I'm happy. happy to, I'm happy for you to be All the right. object of my affection. So that makes you my unknown, rival. Unknown. So step four. Um, if we hadn't already got our character role and background, we'd be choosing that now. Yeah. But we do. So we can skip that. Hooray Yay. Us. So step five. Um, what we're going to do now is flesh out our characters mm -hmm. and discover the meaning of our relationships. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Um, and we should definitely talk to each other during that process. Um, but we can also start uh, filling out our character sheets. So yeah, just to quickly awesome. explain how the character sheets work. So on your character role sheet, you've got your name, your age, your appearance and temperament. Um, that's all you'll need to fill out for now. However, um, we'll come back to the other sections of your sheet later. Mm -hmm. But it is worth noting uh, down the bottom on that same side, you have a section which will be the meddler is or the socialite is. Yep. And that contains the uh, attributes of your character role. So basically the stereotypical things about that character type. So you can um, use those as, a, as an inspiration point when creating your character if you'd like. Below that, very important, is the player principles. So these are the things that as players you... <laughs> should do during the game and it's things like respect the decisions we've made earlier in collaboration, uh, take action to pursue desires, accept and orchestrate your major character's own misfortunes mm -hmm. and contribute to the story and support other players. Then on your other sheet, so your family background sheet, you have a starting reputation tag to pick from. Uh, so that's, that's something that society thinks about you because of who your family were. Some of the family backgrounds also have other cool things to pick. So I believe Sam has the peerage background, which mm. means that you will get to select a title for your character as well. Fantastic. Yes. I really want to know why we're rivals. I it's want to figure true. this out. I know we, I'm we not do. quite sure what happened, but it may be they're trying to claim my headness title. Ooh, that's true. <laughs> maybe we have like some sort of connection from like that world. Like I am the red. debaucher at parties, not you. I drink the most. Like I threw a party once. It's a, it's a show of, uh, you know... Uh, distinction that you're the one who's the most having the most fun the most fun the most the most free with the wine yeah the most you know gregarious so right. the fact that you always are around you're at the same parties i am mm -hmm. all the time showing up and all you do is try and take the attention away from yeah, me. Yeah, right. And yeah. I am extremely upset about this. Well, I was thinking to make this rivalry even more acute. Dear Anonymous, because, like, I, I obviously was a close friend of your character. Yes. yes. And clearly... Sam, your character definitionally has a thing for me. So I Easy. wonder if that heightens the tension. Tossing out ideas, yeah. maybe there was like an unspoken relationship between us. There was some sort of thing between us, but then what happened is you don't have very much money actually, right? No. Possibly what I did was like <laughs> very embarrassingly and publicly either call off an engagement or like 
say no to a proposal ah. that was very public. So to make it more scandalous, yeah. I could have called off an engagement. Yes. Because that is like a... Uh. So now, uh, the only the other thing you need to do once you've kind of figured out your character's appearance and temperament is pick their starting reputation tag um, and write that on the public information sheet. So I will take the top spot. And my background is new money. So I am going to take the starting reputation tag. Ambitious, it sounds like me. That's my positive one. All right. I do, however, have unfortunate connections. Um, we'll just go through and introduce ourselves. Mm -hmm. I am playing Thomas Greenwich. He is the meddler, so he likes to be all up in everybody else's business at all times. And I think he gets that trait from his parents. His parents are from New Money. They're like industrial meddlers. They like know everybody and like, you know, you see somebody down the road, like my parents know him, and I'm a bit like that as well. I am a vivacious, lively person, but I'm always overdressed for every occasion because I don't understand uh, the correct level of dress for genteel society. As we heard previously, I uh, was formally engaged to Miss Thorne. Um, however, I publicly called off the engagement. The rumour is that it was because the Thorns are in financial ruin. <laughs> Meanwhile... Has love began to blossom between um, Thomas and Baron Valentine? We'll find out. 